and welcome to another exciting episode of the Timbrel Tavern. And this week I've got two special guests. They've been on the tavern before and they're kind of like legends now here. We've got Comic Book Cade. Oh, uh, I'm dying. Yeah, he's, he's, got, he's got a little bit of an illness at the moment, but he's doing okay. And we've got Galaxy oh. Thousand. Yeah, basically, but he's still going strong. And we've got Galaxy Thousand here as well. So, gentlemen, good to have you on the tavern How again. are we special? How are we special? Oh. I'm special. I mean, we are we are disabled, but how are we special? <laughs> <laughs> so before we get into the big topics this week, I just want to talk about what went down at the Mandalorian um, just last week of that epic episode we had. What were your thoughts on it? I don't it want was, your opinion. I want my opinion. Well, you were then. <laughs> oh no, I was, make, I was making a joke with the armor joke. Ah, uh, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's just pretty uh, good. He took off his helmet. I wasn't expecting it, but it was awesome. I think there's going to be a Finn um, recurring once a season. He's going to take off his helmet for a scene. I think that's what they might go for, but I thought it was rather cool, you know? I mean, the first time we saw it, he was all beaten up and everything, so this time we actually get to see, you know, a bit more of a look on what he actually looks like. He's got a funny mustache. Yeah, I got to see Pedro Pascal's beautiful, beautiful face. You know what he reminded me of? What's that? He reminded me of um the guy from Rick and Morty that Summer wanted to hook up with. with that was it, the uh, Mad Max episode. Yeah. yeah. The helmet. <laughs> it's like no one's seen my face since I was a boy. And then he takes off. We just see a mustache and then a like, perfectly cut hair. Just imagine, mm. bro. He took off his helmet just to reveal another helmet underneath. How crazy would that be? I mean, that'd be pretty funny. Yeah. It'd be perfect. It, it, I think they did that back in um, the Japanese Spider-Man series where someone tried to unmask him, but he was wearing another mask underneath. Which is actually kind of yeah. clever. Let's get stuffy. And also then, Boba Fett. Oh, and Boba Fett as well. God, <laughs> Boba Fett was... I like Boba's uh, polished armor. I'm not going to lie. It looks really cool. It looked clean. It looked, it looked very clean. He's become... I think he's... Look... Carry on. Go on. <laughs> There's something bothering me about the dent in his helmet because of supposedly he meant he's meant to get the dent from Gad Bane after he had a shoot shoot off you know like shootouts mm-hmm. and um, since it's Beskar we've seen bullet blast bolts just bounce back off the armor so how did that but how does that dent the helmet if it's made out of Beskar? It depends what type of blaster was used I suppose I'm not sure maybe it had the Beskar dent in fin to it I don't know depends on the it's gun. It's a reference to the Iron Giant. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, mm. where he has the dent in his head. Superman. Can we call him Boba Dent now? Is that what we're doing? <laughs> <laughs> yes. No. Oh. Be very epic. Slave One as well. Aye, the Slave One. Oh, that seismic charge, man. Good callback to Attack of the Clones. Wham. I love the seismic charge. It's my favorite weapon. I mean, I hate it in Battlefront, but I love hearing it. In <laughs> I just love hearing it. Dude, it was so cool in the in the show. Oh yeah. Mm. Django would have been very proud of his boy right there. I can tell you that now. Also, Django confirmed a real Mandalorian. Yeah, for Apparently. a long while he he wasn't, but in canon he is now. See, but, I always uh... had a feeling that he was Mandalorian because you know he had the armor and you know the style that he did everything in and everything. Yeah, so. did, didn't he just steal the armor in Legends? I think he might have. All... Yeah. It was also in Clone Clone Wars where um Obi Wan went to Mandalore to find out more about uh. Uh, I think it was like by like black like Death Watch, and mm. um, uh, he said to Obi Wan that armor. It, I don't know if that was armor was stolen. I have no idea how he's got it, but he's not a Mandalorian or something like that. You remember? Yeah, it took, yeah. But it turns out he was a foundling all along, just like Din was. So yeah, <laughs> I think that's um, that's that's actually really cool. I'm glad they included that because you know Mandalorian stuff is always cool. You know. And yeah. I got to give this series credit. It's really getting me more influ- like I'm getting more inspired by Mandalorian mythology in Star Wars now because of this show. Yeah, that's how good it is. And I can't it wait is, for the series finale good. as well. Gideon versus Mando. I'm looking forward to that. Mm. With the dark and uh, <laughs> the, doing Old Republic stuff as well, like Tython and everything. Yes. Oh, when I heard that they were going to Tython, I was so happy because I love the Old Republic, like I mentioned uh, in the last episode of the Tavern when I ranked the Star Wars games. Old Republic is one of the 
best eras in Star Wars history with Revan and Malgus and all that kind of stuff going on. So the fact that they're starting to reference some of that now in The Mandalorian, it is so cool and it makes me a very happy Star Wars fan. It is It is very cool. Yeah. And uh, Ahsoka Tano. Oh, Ahsoka. Yeah. Ahsoka. Oh, she looked great back in, in her episode, man. That was awesome in The Jedi. And she could kick oh. some ass, that's for sure. But then again, I yeah. always knew that. <laughs> I was a bit point- disappointed seeing Jedi in general, because I, what I liked about Mandalorian is like it was letting Star Wars branch off to create something. Wait, well, Mandalorians aren't new. We know they're not new. We've seen them for years. Oh, yeah. they've been around it's since Old Republic. It just felt it just felt new, because all we've been seeing with Star Wars is lightsabers, the Force, crappy remakes, you know, we just wanted something new. And it yeah. did something new. Throughout the Jedi, throughout the Force, just plain Star Wars Mandalorian. And it just felt so good having something new. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love seeing Ahsoka. I thought it was brilliant seeing Ahsoka <laughs> uh, in live action and seeing lightsabers again. But yeah. I kind of want felt like it was too early, we, like seeing Jedi again. I mean, technically, yeah. she did say in Rebels she's no Jedi, but, you know, I see your point there. <laughs> I mean, it lightsabers in the Force. This is what I've seen because I I saw Filoni talk about that because uh, he obviously got questioned afterwards why they refer to Ahsoka as a Jedi, and he said it's because Ahsoka embodies what the Jedi should be, but not what they actually became. So in in a sense, she is the most true Jedi that there is. I must agree on that. To be honest, yeah, the 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 proper Jedi they were always kind of uptight, like you saw in the prequels and. That kind of ended up being their downfall. You know? Yeah. So it kind of did. <laughs> no, exactly. So she, even though she doesn't refer to herself as a Jedi, she is the most Jedi-like out of all of them. Mm. Exactly, I agree with you on that. But um, I can't wait to see what they do now of her character later on in the future, which we will get into momentarily, of course. But uh... Yes, yes. <laughs> I want to. I want to talk about you know because the finale is coming up now this week. What do you want? What do you expect out of this finale for the Mandalorian season two? Grogu's going to do something cool. Definitely, I, I, Grogu is just. <laughs> we can stop calling him Baby Yoda now. He finally has a name. It's Grogu. And of Guys course, missed something very important. Yeah. What? The what? Razor Crest. Oh yeah. Oh, Effing... Yep. F in the chat for Razor Crest after rip, Typhon. Rip the Razor Crest. I felt so sad. Like I was actually thinking as soon as I saw it, like, would I feel this pain for the Millennium Falcon? Because the Millennium Falcon feels overused and just a cheap ship now. Like, it's not unique anymore. It's like it's been handed down to Lando, Han, uh, Chewie, Ray. It's just it's just everyone's had that ship. It's everyone's ship. But the mm. Razor Crest felt like the Mandalorian ship. It felt like his thing. It's like a part of him. And when we saw it get destroyed, we felt like a little part of us lost it too. Because we we grew a connection with the Mandalorian, and the Mandalorian grew a connection with the ship and Grogu. It's just these things coming like a circle, and it feels like they're just taking the bit of the circle out, and it's like incomplete now. And yeah. that's why they called that chapter the tragedy, folks. <laughs> exactly. That was the real tragedy, not Grogu being kidnapped by those awesome dark troopers. The real tragedy was that damn ship. Mm. But hey, at least he gets a ride in the Slave One. I'm jealous. True. True. I'm jealous. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I liked how um a scene in the Prison Break episode, sorry, not the Prison Break, uh, the current episode, where you actually saw the you actually saw the um uh Slave One tilt its black. Yeah. So, no, it can because they say it does when it takes off. It tilts, so he's constantly straightforward. But we don't actually see it, but we've actually seen it now, and it looks so cool. Absolutely, I definitely agree with you on mm. that. It reminded me of a, a ride, I think, it, uh, in a in a place called Efteling in Germany, called Villa Volta or something, where it's like one of those rooms where you sit in a sit in a chair and like it rocks you, but it looks like the whole room is spinning and you're spinning with it. It just looks so so cool. And that's what it felt like. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it was cool. So of course, the final episode is out this uh, just this Friday. I'm really excited. I'm sure you lot are as well. So uh, hopefully, it delivers with the final episode. I think it's going to be one of the best ones ever, and I think there's going to be one epic showdown that we're all going to be talking about for years to come. Definitely. Hell yeah! Do you want to know something funny about the Razor Crest being destroyed? <laughs> What's that? Like? The day after, in my Star Wars advent calendar, I got the Razor Crest. Oh. <laughs> I was so tempted to not build it and take a picture and say, "Look, guys, I got the Razor Crest." 
This is it's all destroyed on the floor. <laughs> Big F. Perfect depiction there after it, isn't it? <laughs> so it, it's been a bit of a crazy week um, as a result. And, you know, we had that Disney investor stream just later in the week, near the weekend. Um, we, so you guys tuned into that on Discord and I joined you for a little bit. Yeah. And um, I just want to get your insight on what you saw throughout that whole Disney stream. <laughs> What were your thoughts on uh, that? So, what was my thoughts? Uh, <laughs> for about two hours, it was the most boring thing I'd ever watched until I actually started talking about the content coming to Disney+. Plus. I noticed yeah. a lot of intermissions as well, which uh, kind of did my Oh my in. god, there were so many intermissions. See, I, I get what it was, though, because uh, for a lot of those intermissions, it was because they were showing footage that they wanted the only the investors to see and not the general public, which, you know, is fair enough. Although it is cool... That uh, star is coming to Disney Plus, so we're gonna have like Kingsman, Die Hard, a- the Alien franchise, all that on Disney Plus, which is pretty cool. More movies to watch, then. That's pretty cool. Exactly. You know, I found most disappointing out of the whole thing was that mm-hmm. night. <laughs> they, waste, they wasted our time with the Obi Wan Kenobi announcement. They were like, in a bit, we're gonna show a trailer. They didn't even do it. They didn't even show a trailer. I mean, everything else they showed trailers for. The Obi Wan show. No, they. Yeah, that was one of the ones where they only showed it to the invest- investors, not the general public. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of dumb. Yeah, that was but kind of a not, tease. It's, a bit yeah, of a tease, really, isn't it? Big old, big old tease. We got blue balled. <laughs> but they did announce a bunch of stuff for Star Wars as well, like new series and everything. And uh, it, it, yes. some of it looks pretty interesting, to say the least. Um, I know we're finally getting an Ahsoka series. Uh... which is going to carry on with her character story. She's had one of the best stories in Star Wars history over the last um, few years, so I'm very she excited has. to see what they do with her here. We've got Rangers of the New Republic, because uh, they yes, don't seem to care about the Old the... Republic anymore. That's the Cara Dune and potentially Bill Burr's character. I forgot his name. Uh, they're getting us that's their spin-off i'm pretty sure that's what rangers of the new republic is mm-hmm. we got a spin-off then for lando as well which uh, yeah. is quite, that's gonna be really fun to watch not gonna lie uh that is gonna be good we've got andor for cassian andor if you don't know was um, one of the main characters mm-hmm. back in rogue one that's one of the ones i don't care for i'm like cool i guess i didn't like rogue one but sure yeah, it'd be eye-opening to see what his character was like you know so you know it might be kind of interesting to keep an eye on so that's for sure mm. then there's one as well called the acolyte um do you remember what this one was about because i can't remember the acolyte what was that one about yes again? yes 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 that is the only show set in the old republic uh-huh. that is coming out because it is like a murder i think they said like a murder mystery type show but set in the old republic during the rise of the sith or like oh, the oh, rise oh. of the dark side now that so, sounds pretty good. Yeah, that that one I'm excited for. I think that's going to be quite cool. And then, of course, we've got the one that we're all looking forward to, the Bad Batch. <laughs> Bad right. Batch. I, so, I we we'd known Bad Batch was coming out, and I was kind of like, eh, you know, it's it's another animated show. But after seeing the trailer, I am I I do think it looks quite good. Yeah, it's going to be a nice continuation, like a nice spin-off of the Clone Wars. So it's going to be really exciting to see what uh, that's going to be about. I'm I'm going to keep an eye out on that one. And we're actually going to see uh, what you call it, uh, how the Empire actually took over the Republic after Order sixty six, which is quite good. Absolutely, yeah. That's yeah. A good idea. And of course, we've got the one that you know we all love. Kenobi, we finally got some insight on what's going to happen in that series because Aiden Christensen. they're bringing back Aiden Christensen as Darth Vader. <laughs> Kenobi! As, uh, Kenobi! Kenobi! I am very excited to, to see that. I, I cannot wait. That's, that's the one series that I've been wanting to see for a long time. So I'm very excited to see what they do with this. And Maybe we'll get a Kenobi Vader rematch just before A New Hope as well. So I'm really excited we, for uh, that. They, 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 they said it. during, they, they said during it. the yeah, they said during the stream that uh, it's going to have quote unquote the rematch of the century. Well, um, <laughs> I, I I don't know who to place my bet on just yet, but you know it's going to be really exciting. I can't wait to see that. 
See, I was talking to Josh about it, and he said, oh, well, there's, they're obviously going to have Obi-Wan win. It's his show. But I'm like, I don't know. I think it'd be ca- really cool if Vader actually won against Obi-Wan, but, like, didn't kill him. Yeah, I'd be, just kept him alive. I'd be willing to lean towards Vader because, you know, you know, the dark side is with him now, and but and Kenobi's going to be a bit older as well, so, you know, his powers might be a weak for an old man, but it depends how old he's gotten, really, so, you know. Have you forgotten what he did in Twin Sons? Oh, yeah, well, yeah, but Maul kind of went like a wimp then, anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, <Very> um... <laughs> So we got Kenobi, and we've also got Rogue Squadron. That's been announced as well. Uh, now, I remember when they announced this, you weren't quite happy about this one. So why don't you tell us why you weren't so happy about it? Have they not learned their lesson yet? No, this is literally will. the living embodiment of how many times do we have to teach you the same lesson, old man? Or in this case, old <laughs> woman. Because... Right, okay. Number one, who wants to see a Rogue Squadron move? The whole point of the Rogue Squadron games is you get to be the Rogue Squadron pilot. You get to pilot each of these ships. That's what's so appealing. Who wants to watch that? Like, maybe it's like a limited series. Maybe. But as a feature-length film, just no. Secondly, Patty Jenkins. That was a voice break, ignore it. Patty (laughs) Jenkins. (laughs) Directed Wonder Woman. I don't like Wonder Woman, right? So that that already kind of puts a bad taste in my mouth. And it's just why? Why would you want to? Like you know, know you know, spin-off movies don't work properly. Dolo, Rogue One. Like, sure, they might be good in some people's eyes, but compared to the other Star Wars movies, they make jack, right? So why why would you want to do another spin-off movie? Just Make that a series. Like, this, oh, I, I don't like it. It's dumb. It's stupid. Another thing I wanted to say about that on that on that topic. Mm-hmm. If they were going to make a video game into a movie, why didn't they do Fallen Order? Exactly. Or the Old Republic. I want what? an Old Republic movie just as badly made. I Like, that's the one thing I said last time on Thavin. We need a Darth Revan movie starring Keanu Reeves. That's what we Our want. Squadrons flopped. It, it flopped the pre-orders. I, f- and I don't think people, many, many people liked it when they first saw it. I didn't like it when I first saw it. No. But Fallen Order got some really good attention when it got when it first came out. And, I know. And they decided to make it out of Squadron. It's, it, it's like they're completely ignoring the fans and doing what the hell they want because that's it's, what they think is it's good. It's Star Wars. What did you expect? <laughs> A Fallen Order movie would be really cool to watch. I definitely would tune in for that one. Hell yeah, that'd be awesome. But you know, I'm gonna stick to my gun and say we need a Revan movie. We that would just be so cool. It'd be it'd probably be one of the I best know. Star Wars films of all time. I'm gonna stick to my guns and say that Kathleen needs to step down and just let Dave Filoni and John Favreau be in charge yeah. of Star Wars. Yeah, we need Filoni, Favreau, and of course Waititi as well because Waititi's a damn good director. And speaking I'm... of, he's also making a Star Wars movie that I don't hold nearly as much resentment for because I love Taika Waititi. He's one of my favorite directors, and I feel like he might actually be able to do something decent with Star Wars. I think he will. I think he's going to make a really good Star Wars movie, depending what story he does. Yeah. So I'm really looking forward to see what he does with that. So those were the Star Wars news that we had um, just. No, you, for- you forgot. You've got two shows. Oh yeah, what have we got? We've what have we got? Uh, Star Wars Visions. Oh yeah, that's is... was not the anime one. Yes, uh, it's like I think they said ten different episodes by ten different like uh, anime people set in the Star Wars universe, which is pretty cool. And the droids TV show about R two and three PO. Yes, R two and three PO finally getting their own series after how many years now? <laughs> Well, yeah, exactly. They did have an animated series back in the day, and it was terrible. So... Can't be as bad as the holiday special. <laughs> That's the true. The special? The yeah, we, we don't special. talk about that. The what special? We don't the talk about holiday special. It. <laughs> the what? Oh, right. I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, now you get it. This is not the special you're looking so, for. If you want a Star Wars holiday special... Watch the Lego one. I mean, it's not great, but it's it's better than the original one. <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, they threw a lot of series at us for the announcements this um, that week for um, from Disney. So and interesting. There's still five more to be because they said they're making te- like ten shows, I think. And then, uh, th- yeah, there's still five more yet to be announced, which is quite quite interesting. Mm. So those are all the Star Wars stuff that's been announced, but we also had some stuff for the Marvel Cinematic Universe from Papa Feige himself. In that right, Yay. fellas. It was really Ooh. dumb though because the first part of the content showcase was Lucasfilm so you're like okay this is what one out of the two reasons why I'm here mm. is is gone over with let's hope the next one's Marvel but nope they wanted to talk more about business stuff and then all the Disney originals then all the Pixar originals and then at the, <laughs> at the end they finally got onto Marvel it's like well I've just sat here for like another two hours we're sitting through all this crap just so I could see what's new with Marvel. Yeah, after the Star Wars announcements, I just went to bed because I couldn't be honest, waiting another couple hours just to see the Marvel stuff. I was staying up for the Game Awards anyway, which will Yeah, we'll, we'll get to the Game Awards in just a moment, but we got the MCU stuff. We had a lot of stuff announced for that, so Will. A lot of stuff, Why yes. don't you take us through it, mate? Alright, so what do we have first? Uh, Chadwick Boseman's not being recast, which everyone kind of guessed. Yeah, yeah, it wouldn't be right. So it, yeah, it's probably going to end up being, like, Shuri or something, being Black Panther 2. Uh, I wouldn't mind that. Like Shuri. Yeah, uh, speaking of not recasting, or in this case, recasting, uh, Ant-Man 3, Quantumania, uh, Cassie Lang is being recast, which okay. I'm not a fan of because the actress I know from Supernatural, and I don't like her in Supernatural, so that'll be interesting. Plus, I think the original actress was fine. Yeah, she was like, cool. Yeah, I mean, we saw her for about 30 seconds. Yeah, but, you know, was she just a stand-in or what? <laughs> yeah, for, for what we got in Endgame, she was she was fine. Uh, yeah, also Ant-Man 3, Quantumania. Uh, everyone's coming back. And we're also getting Kang the Conqueror. Yes, played by is... Jonathan Majors, from what I've heard. Kang the Conqueror. Yes, yes we are. That's that's cool. I'm, I'm, I, I kind of thought they were going to do Kang... Because Ant Man seems to be more based on like the time travel, quantum realm kind of crap. Kang is the blue guy in Purple Armor, isn't he? Uh, I think so. He's the he's the guy from Lego Marvel Superiors Two. He's the main bad guy, mate. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, that, yeah, definitely him. Yeah, oh, definitely hello. him. My dog's just walked in. <laughs> uh, yeah. What else? We got trailers finally for uh, Loki, Falcon Winter Soldier, and Wonder Vision. Oh, I, All of I the... enjoyed the Loki trailer. That was good. You know what I love about the Loki trailer? They made him uh, DB Cooper, which is absolutely amazing. <laughs> uh, for those who don't know who DB Cooper is, I think it was oh, I don't know the year, like eighties, seventies, or something. There was a man in a suit and glasses with slicked back hair who hijacked an airplane. Uh, and he was called, well, uh, D.B. Cooper. <laughs> and he requested like $1 million and took the entire plane hostage. And then he jumped out of the plane and was never found and never seen from again. And in the Loki trailer, they made Loki D.B. Cooper, where when he jumped out of the plane, he got uh, taken by the Bifrost. And that's why he disappeared, which is which is quite cool. That's going to be really, really exciting to see what happens <laughs> next after that. <laughs> I know. And I think honestly, Loki is the one I'm most excited for, because I don't know, it just looks cool. I like really, we, yeah, I'm really we, looking we got forward the TVA. to. Yeah, I'm looking forward to Loki and Falcon and Winter Soldier as well. That's a, another series I'm looking forward to. Mm. Especially like, after yeah, seeing we, the trailer. Yeah, we got obviously the TVA, which is the Time Something Authority. I forgot what the V stands for. Yeah. Uh, and we got Owen Wilson, which wow. is quite cool. If you, yeah, if he doesn't say wow in the Loki series, I'm going to be genuinely disappointed. We're going to riot. We are going to riot. <laughs> exactly. And we've got lo- loads of space stuff going. And we've got President Loki at the end as well, which is quite cool. <laughs> yeah, definitely look forward to Loki. And obviously we've got Falcon Winter Soldier. Not as much revealed as in the Loki trailer. Kind of just like a lot of action stuff. Uh, nothing nothing really about the plot. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much just showing them falcon flying around yeah very in- independence day style in that canyon with the the jet but i do know we're also getting the u.s agent version of captain america is somewhere down the line in there as well so that's going to be interesting yeah exactly because i don't know how he ends up getting the shield maybe they give it to him maybe he steals it and government shenanigans you crazy bastards <laughs> 
Exactly. And then one division looks interesting. Yeah. Say the least. I wasn't too sure what to make of that. It's, it's like Yeah. We know we know that it's gonna tie directly into Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. And then we also know that Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness is gonna tie directly into Spider Man three. We'll get to we'll, that just yeah, in we'll a get second. To that. <laughs> uh but yeah, obviously we got uh the agent from uh, Ant Man Two coming back in One Division, the agent that like puts him under house arrest, which is kind of cool. Oh yeah, that we guy. also got we got uh, Darcy from the first two Thor films coming in for One Division for some reason as well. <laughs> yeah, it looks looks interesting to say the least. Absolutely. What are your thoughts, Corrigan? On which bits? One Division, <laughs> Loki. Falcon. Oh, the TV series. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not too thrilled about Cap- about Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Uh, I am very interested on how on how they're gonna do the House House of M, and mm-hmm. how Vision is brought back. Uh, I can't wait for the Loki show because I love Tom Hiddleston. I think he's like one of the best choices for Loki. Everybody loves Loki. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what was the other show? Oh yeah, Spider Man. Um. I can't wait for Spider Man. Like I know people are saying it's rumored that we'll, we'll get to that in just the moment. Don't worry. <laughs> I know it's rumored, but I I love the I love the first Doctor Strange. It's like one of my favorite MCU films, Doctor Strange one. Uh, and Same. I can't wait. Yeah, it's such a good film. I, it gets a lot of. I see a lot of people saying like it's one of the bottom tier ones. I'm like hell no. What? It's a good Doctor film. Strange, <laughs> Doctor Strange is amazing. I I love Doctor Strange. I thought it was a tremendous film. Yeah. A little That's bit trippy doctor- with the visual effects and everything, but it was good. I, I yeah. love the visual effects. Mm, it, it, it was amazing. Mm. But yeah. Okay, so, we're, we're, we're... so there's that. We've also got a Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special coming in 2022, which is going to be oh, yeah, something. Got We've got more TV series announced. Secret Invasion. We got that yeah. one. We've got Ironheart, which was a surprise to be sure. Boo. Which I'm not really fond of. I I saw the comic and it's I was like, "Not, it's not because we're racist. Yeah, we're it's not, not racist because we're racist. It's, <laughs> I Iron Man needs to be left alone, man. Yeah, I mean, I, we got we got Armor Wars coming, but that's that's War Machine. Yeah, that's an established Machine. character. That's fair enough. We don't need another Iron Man character. No, we've got enough of them. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I am Groot. I am Groot. Yes, am Groot. another kind of Guardians of the Galaxy short. They, I, I feel like they're going to try and milk Guardians like a little too much. Yeah, I hope not though, because you know it's it's a good franchise and the the movies are, are really fun to watch. So hopefully they don't uh, overdo it. But first one, first one was really good. The second one was meh. I, I liked Ego. Ego was good. Yeah, Ego was funny. And, yeah. Uh, but we've also got other films as well. We got Blade. That's coming in twenty twenty two. They're bringing back Blade, mm-hmm. which is not Ma- Wesley Snipes Mashala but Ali. Mahasha. Ali. Why did you say his name again? Mash- Mashallah Ali. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> that name. <laughs> Which is weird because he played the main bad guy in Luke Cage. <laughs> hmm. I think he voiced Prowler in Spider Verse as well. Yeah, yeah, I think he did. Yeah, the Prowler is Blade. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think he'll do Prowler. a good job. Oh, that's amazing. And oh, of course, cool. they've officially announced it. We're getting another Fantastic Four reboot. <laughs> See, I'm <Yeah>. scared. <laughs> I'm scared. I don't. Like, obviously, like, everyone's like, oh, when Fantastic Four has come to Marvel, it's going to be amazing. And when they announced Fantastic Four, I was like, yes, we're finally going to get a Fantastic Four. But then they announced who was directing it, John and Watts. I immediately got scared. Yeah, it, it, it's, it does seem kind of uh, worrying on what they're going to do with Fantastic Four. Like, I just hope, you know, the third time's a charm, because, you know, the first franchise that they did... Um, with Ewan Grefford and Jessica Albert, I didn't mind those films, I'm not going to lie. I didn't mind them. They were okay. I didn't mind them. But yeah. then came the Fox reboot in 2015, and you know what that was like. I won't what? watch it. I won't watch it. Have you, have you not seen it? I won't. I, I know oh. I know what happens. I know all of it. I won't watch it. I honestly thought the lights were broken in that film because of how dark it was. Like, it was literally every scene was them talking in a dark room. That's Pretty literally, much. like, at least 90% of the movie which, right there. Which sucks, because the, the original idea for it was amazing. Like, Doctor Doom was going to be, like, the Herald of Galactus. 
Mm. And it's, it's, it's going to be awesome, but then, nope, Fox had to intervene. Yeah, I remember, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I gave my thoughts on how they could have done that a few months ago back on the tavern when I was talking about fan cast and the Fantastic Four for the MCU, so... Yeah. I don't know if they'll do it for this, but who knows? We can only wait and see, innit? <laughs> yeah, with, with John Watts, it's no surprise. Well, it's no new news. I Not a big fan of MCU Spider-Man. Uh, mm. Homecoming, I thought, was decent far from home i'm very back and forth on i i don't think john watts should be directing fantastic four i genuinely I, people wanted peyton reed the guy who did the two ant-man movies i think that would have been a better choice he would have been good i think the best choice though could have been brad bird who did the incredibles because oh, the, the incredibles yeah. just already is yeah. the best fantastic four movie it, it, it is yeah. it is <laughs> It's Five. just so good. I think I, I think he should have. Yeah, I I I think he should have done it. So yeah, seeing John Watts has kind of kind of swayed me a little bit to being a little bit scared on how they're going to do Fantastic Four in the MCU. But uh, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Mm. So we've got that for the MCU, but there is one more film we need to discuss. I know you guys are aching to talk about this. Captain Marvel 2. Yeah. Yes, Captain Marvel 2, of course. <laughs> no, not really, though. But uh, let's do it. Let's talk about Spider-Man 3 in the MCU. Is oh, is cool. Tom Holland even going to be in it at this rate? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's just everyone's in it. It's like Smash. Just everyone is here. Everyone is in. This is literally Spider. <laughs> this is literally what's going to be for Spider-Man Three because they're, they're literally throwing everybody in. And we've got we just got the news last week that Alfred Molina, Alfred Molina is coming back as Doc Ock, and that made me so I'm, happy. I'm going to say something that might get me kicked off this podcast forever, but <laughs> I'm not that big a fan of Alfred Molina's Doctor Octopus. <laughs> Why is that then? I, I think he's all like. Don't get me wrong. I have nothing against the actor or anything. It's just I feel like he was, he's boring. He is a boring villain. Like he's what? He... No! <laughs> so, yeah, I think we're about to have a debate here. <laughs> he's boring. He's, I recently rewatched every Spider-Man movie to get fresh opinions on them, and I I. Kid you not, I enjoyed Spider Man three and Spider Man one more than I enjoyed Spider Man two. Fair like, I, I don't know. I just found it so boring. Like what? He's a a scientist that stupidly left an inhibitor chip completely exposed on the back of his thing, and then the tentacles take over. Yeah, cool. That was kind of dumb. his wife killed, and does it again. Yeah, and then he robs a bank because he needs the money to rebuild the thing. That killed his wife and made him deranged. And Why just, did he do it again? He's just not. He's not. It was his I, dream. He's boring. It was his dream. It was apparently. I t- he was just boring. Green Goblin was a better villain. I'm. I'm not going to say Venom was a better villain because he's not. But Sandman was a better villain. <laughs> I think you know the best villain of um, the Raimi films was Goblin. Goblin was great. Sandman was brilliant as well. <laughs> so that was Sandman cool. was wasted, man. He could have been so good. Like think... he was good, but he could have been so much better. Yeah, the problem was though is because the, it wasn't balanced with the villains because they threw too many villains in Spider-Man Three. So you know, mm. it should have just been Sandman, really, and maybe New Goblin or Hobgoblin. It should have been. See what's funny though, because when I did my rewatch and I was watching, because I remember Green Goblin being the best villain in the trilogy, so I was like, oh, at least I'm starting out with something, you know, really good. But I don't know. When I rewatched it, I couldn't take him seriously. Any time he was on screen, I just laughed. Just be Spider-Man. Plus, not only that, his mouth doesn't move when he talks. Like you impressive. Can see... Like a Power <laughs> Ranger. <laughs> You could see through like the black net in like the inside of his mouth. Uh, yeah. Willem Dafoe's mouth just doesn't move when he talks. No, <laughs> it's very noticeable when he goes impressive when he when he crouches his punch. Yeah, you yeah. can see he's not moving his mouth. It's it's, it's just you know, <laughs> it's quite funny. But yeah, obviously we're getting supposedly 
getting Maguire, Garfield, everyone's coming back for Spider-Man 3. Yeah, well, we know Jamie Foxx and Molina are definitely confirmed, and I think the rest of them are in talks to be in it, so... It was quite funny, though, because Jamie Foxx confirmed himself that he was in Spider-Man 3, coming back as Electro, then, like, an hour later, took the post down, and then, like, two weeks ago, when asked about it, he was like, hey, if I don't know if I'm in it. It's like, well, you do know, you confirmed it. <laughs> Yeah, and he said he's not going to be blue this time either. <laughs> yeah, which is going to be weird if he is the version from Amazing Spider-Man 2. Yeah, it's like, you know, I mean, he is there's going to be a lot of crazy theories going around, because, you know, Doctor Strange is in it, will it lead to multiverse, will we get Spider-Verse, would that be cool? I don't know, but we'll just have to wait and see about that. But, but yeah, we, we did get direct confirmation from Mr. Feiji himself that... um. Yeah. Doctor Strange into the Multiverse Madness will lead directly into Spider-Man 3, so that basically confirms yeah. multiverse stuff. Also, Charlie Cox is apparently coming back as Daredevil. Oh, now that which, sounds interesting. Which, I want right. to hear that theme again. You know, from the main <laughs> Spider-Man. I love his theme. Oh, yeah, it is really good. But with... Don't get me wrong, I love Charlie Cox Daredevil, right? Daredevil was easily one of my just favorite marvel products i don't think he should be introduced in spider-man 3 i don't I, think he I, fits in with all this cast that you've got in here as well yeah where does daredevil if, fit in if you weren't doing multiverse a hundred percent bring daredevil in like a million percent all down for that but you're doing multiverse so how does how does he kind of fit in with all that because mm. I, I really think they're going to go for multiverse because I've heard rumors that Tobey Maguire was spotted at a costume fitting. Costume fitting, yeah, he was. Which means, you know, you're just, it's, you know, it's up and down. Also, e Emma Stone and Kirsten Dunst are apparently coming back as well. But didn't Gwen die in The Amazing Spider-Man? So that's going to be... Uh... Ho yeah, hopefully she's playing... Uh, I've talked about this with Corrigan. Hopefully she's playing uh, live-action Spider-Gwen. Mm. Now that would be cool. I've seen some nice photoshops of her. Someone's photoshopped her wearing the suit. Can we, can we just get mm. Nicolas Cage in as Spider-Man Noir just for the hell of it? <laughs> <laughs> now that would be that, so that, awesome. That, that, would, that would be pretty cool. That would be really cool. But that's Spider-Verse, I, I guess. So maybe it will be, maybe it won't. But I, I really think they might go for it. Especially oh, actually, with, um... hang on. Sp speaking, with, speaking of Daredevil, uh, obviously Marvel got the rights back, but during the presentation uh, and during one of the shows we kind of skipped over, uh, She-Hulk, uh, obviously Abomination and the Hulk are coming back, which yep. is pretty neat. But Mr. Feiji said that, uh, this is I'm paraphrasing here, but he basically said, uh, obviously She-Hulk's a lawyer, so and she works with superhero cases, so... Who knows who who else could show up from the from the lawyer and superhero worlds? Yeah. yeah. So I think that was kind of a direct hint towards Daredevil maybe showing up in She Hulk instead of Spider Man Three. Maybe that'd be cool. Yeah. I, that'd be really cool to see actually. That would be very cool. I'm just saying, Spider Man Three seems like it's it sounds like End Game, but more extreme because they're bringing back actors we thought never see again. I think that maybe they're copying uh, DC because remember when they were doing um, Crisis, they brought yeah. back. Uh, I think. Ralph. Yeah, I think that's what's inspiring people now to do more multiverse stuff is Crisis, and of course the Spider Verse film that came out as well a few years back as well in 2018. Amazing film. That's Definitely a good film. I really enjoyed that film. My favorite film of all time now. <laughs> it is tremendous. The best Spider Man movie. It's the best mm -hmm. Spider Man film I've seen in years. I'll t I'll say that now. Just best Spider Man movie in general. <laughs> See, Sony can make good movies when they try. <laughs> yeah, but when they try, when they don't, we end up with things like Spider-Man Two and uh, Venom. That's well, actually, me. actually, no, Venom's Venom's right. Venom was decent. Oh, speaking of Thor: Love and Thunder. Yes. Uh, what's his face? Christian Bale playing Gore the God Butcher, who in the comics wields all black the Necro Sword, uh, which is. Uh, a symbiote sword. Ooh. So if they incorporate symbiotes in Thor: Love and Thunder, then you know. Next thing you know, we get symbiote four has a plot twist. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> a where are they? <laughs> 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 
But yeah, and I I mean I'd I'd be down for Tom Hardy being folded into the MCU. Well, it, it pretty much is. Yeah, cause... I mean, like if you look at the Mo- remember the Morbius trailer, we saw Michael Keaton in that, right? Yeah. yeah. Man, I'm just, a quiet. Uh, you know, yeah. yeah Something's yeah, happening. So... If Venom and Morbius take place in the same universe, which I say they probably do, then that means that the Venom also takes place in the MCU. Yeah, we saw more Maguire's portrait in one of the graffiti in the uh, treatment. <laughs> it wasn't even Maguire's portrait, though. It's just the Raimi suit PNG from the PS4 game. <laughs> yeah, it's Maguire, though. <laughs> in a way. Maguire's... In a way. Uh... <laughs> So that's all the talk about um, the Spider-Man MCU and the MCU and everything. But we do have one more topic to discuss. Corrigan, I know you've been wanting to talk about this. So <laughs> let's talk about the Game Awards. What did you think? Uh, I wish I never wasted my time watching it if they were just going to rig it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm glad, I, I'm glad Phasmophobia got a reward award because that game does deserve it because it, it's, it's been so fun. I've been playing it with Will, I've been playing with Nico, I've been playing with Ryan. It's just such a fun game. I'm glad you got an award. Yeah. But it, it's so but the the main the game that won game of the year, it's so obvious <laughs> it was it was paid off. They definitely paid them to say, and I'm gonna say it's the last of us part two. I played the first Last of Us and Last of Us Part Two and I love the first one. The second one, it's not the best. But Here's the problem with with the character Abby. I mean, I had a problem with Abby because she killed. Spoiler alert! Uh, she killed one of the main characters from the first one, and uh, the char- the actress got death threats, which I thought was way too far. And no one should deserve death threats for even playing a part because she is responsible. She just voiced the character, and I thought that was stupid. But given that she got death threats, no one would vote her for best character of the year or vote the game best character of the year. Like you don't vote someone, you don't give someone death threats and then you give them game of the year. That just doesn't happen. No, no one does that. So, and the fact that the, and she won game of the year, which proves that it was, that they paid them because seriously, if you sent death threats to a person and said they're the worst person ever and you want them dead, you will not vote them. And yeah, yet she and, won. And, <laughs> and yet she won. Yeah. It just makes no sense. It's so <laughs> obvious it is more of... <laughs> I need to calm down for it. So you guys talk about something else, please. <laughs> <laughs> you good? You good? <laughs> yeah, he's good. Yeah, the Game of the Awards, uh, the Game yeah. Awards this year, I thought, were kind of Cramp. odd. Yeah, kind of dumb, really. Like, I had a feeling, you know, The Last of Us would win Game of the Year because it didn't really have that much competition other than Ghost of Tsushima and Doom Eternal. But, um, yeah, it mm. was kind of a big letdown, really. But we did get some kind of news. Like, we got a new character for Smash Brothers, a.k.a. Sephiroth. Sephiroth. Which uh, is going to be I cool. fucking panicked when I saw him stab Mario. Like, I, I didn't know if it was going to be a cock or not. Cause remember when they killed Luigi? They, they flat out killed yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> well, some dark do shit that. going yeah, on here. <laughs> I they was kept, genuinely they, sorry, go on. So when they suspended him by his um suspend, I was like, oh my god, thank god. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I was genuinely convinced because obviously me and uh, uh, Corrigan watched it live together because we were watching the uh, Disney thing anyway, and um, yeah. uh, but I think it was a couple hours beforehand, uh, uh, Nintendo revealed that there would be a Smash reveal at the Game Awards, and then 15 minutes after the Fortnite Twitter said that they were planning something special for the Game Awards. So I was convinced... I remember, that... yeah, you were, you were terrified that they were going to do a Fortnite thing in Smash. <laughs> I was convinced yeah, that the new character was going to be a Fortnite character. I was convinced. <laughs> but luckily it wasn't. It was Sephiroth, which I'm, I'm much happier with. i tell you what, yeah. Yeah. I am happy, though, that Half-Life Alex won the best VR game because it, it definitely oh, yeah. deserved that. But to be honest... Why wasn't it nominated for Game of the Year? It looks so good. Yeah, I, I don't know why it wasn't yeah, nominated. That should have been up year. there. How by Naughty Dog. <laughs> <laughs> good on uh, Good on Among Us though. That won like two or three awards. Yeah, um, I think Fallen Order got an got nominated as well for an award. 
It did. I can't remember what it was for. But... Why did you get more? <laughs> See, my my one problem. I, Among Us deserves the awards, but my one problem is it didn't come out this year. It came out like two years ago. Yeah. So why yeah. why is it getting awards now? Exactly. Instead of when it came out. Also, Fall Guys won. I think it was best community. Does this mean that so... Mario sixty four is going to be nominated for an award next year just for something after it's been out for hundred like. Oh, 10 years, 20 years or so. <laughs> it's been remastered. It's been remastered on the Switch. Yeah. Three oh. All Stars. Oh, that makes sense then. <laughs> so, overall then, the Game Awards were a bit of a letdown then for all of us, I suppose. Boring. Yeah, it was a waste of time. I yep. would rather watch the 50 Disney intermissions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully next year uh, it turns out to be a bit more uh, exciting for all of us. Well, folks, okay. that is it for the tavern uh, this week. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Comic Bookade and Galaxy Thousand for being tremendous guests. Thank you, boys, for coming on the show today, this week. How do Dab. you feel? Dab. Well, I, I, I feel something. Disappointed. I feel... <laughs> <laughs> well, that is it for this week. I'm Al Timbrell, and I will see you next time for another exciting episode of the Timbrell Tavern. Ta-ta for now. QBN theme. Dance.